Another project I'm spending a lot of my time on these days is a project to address what many people would say is one of the biggest problems we face in the world today. That's the problem of what to do about global climate change. This is a problem that is affected by all of our actions and potentially affects all of us. It's a really big, hard, complicated problem, one that many of the kind of conventional ways of solving problems, government, laws, regulations, etc., many people would say still haven't done a very good job of addressing this problem. The fact that it's complicated, that we haven't made a huge amount of progress so far, those are all reasons for pessimism. But there's at least one reason for optimism, which is that we now have a new way of solving really big, hard, complicated problems that wasn't even possible 20 years ago. If you think about examples like Google and Wikipedia, they show that it's now possible to harness the collective intelligence of thousands of people all over the world to work together on big, hard, complicated problems at a scale and with a degree of collaboration that was never possible before. So our goal in the Climate CoLab project is to harness this collective intelligence and apply it to the, goal, to the problem of what to do about global climate change. To do that, we've created an online platform called the Climate CoLab and a worldwide community of over 50,000 people, including some of the world's leading experts on the science and policy of climate change, as well as students, business people, policy makers, many others from literally all over the world. Together, these people are developing and evaluating proposals for what to do about different aspects of the climate change problem, from how to generate electricity with fewer emissions, to how to adapt to sea level rise, and how to change public attitudes about climate. These proposals can include any suggestions people want to make about technical, economic, social, political, or other changes. They can also, in some cases, use built-in computer simulation tools built into the platform to predict the likely consequences of the actions they propose. Much of the activity on our site is organized in a series of contests. We typically have had uh, a couple of dozen contests in the last couple of years. And in each of these contests, we have expert advisors and judges to select the winners. Uh, the winners present their ideas in an annual conference at MIT and are eligible for a grand prize and a variety of other ways of promoting these ideas and helping move them further toward implementation. Some of our advisors have included people like George Shultz, a former Secretary of State, Hank Paulson, a former Secretary of the Treasury, uh, some former Congress people, both Democrats and Republicans, um, former heads of state, and a bunch of professors from MIT, Stanford, and places like that. So one example of a, of a proposal that won the grand prize in last year's Climate Collab contest was an idea for something called the Sun Saluter. It was a rotating solar panel that rotates during the day to follow the sun across the sky, powered by water and gravity. By rotating across the sky like that, it generates about 30% more electricity than a fixed solar panel would. And the water that drips out to power it or to allow gravity to move it across the sky, the water is filtered into four liters of clean drinking water per day. So the same device, low-cost device, generates electricity and clean drinking water, two critical needs for millions of people around the world. That's an example of an idea that came from uh, someone who had dropped out of Princeton, I believe, came up with this idea and is now uh, licensing the idea to people around the world to develop and distribute these devices. Another example that I think illustrates kind of where these ideas can come from is an idea from an NGO in India to for use by small farmers in India. 
the idea was that in many cases these farmers would be better off not to use the diesel powered irrigation pumps many of them are using today and instead to use foot powered treadle pumps that are both more but less expensive and also much more environmentally sustainable than the very heavily emitting diesel pumps they've used so far. So that I think is an example of an idea that's very unlikely to come from anybody sitting in a laboratory at MIT. It came from somebody who was on the ground in a faraway place with a much better understanding of what was actually possible and needed there than many of us here at MIT might have had. Yes, all the ideas that are submitted, all the proposals submitted on the Climate CoLab are publicly visible all along. Uh, we make a special effort to call attention in the public to the ones that win prizes and win awards in the various contests. Uh, but uh, we also have semi-finalists and finalists in all the contests and all those and all the others are available for anyone. In fact, I just recently, uh, in fact this weekend, I was at a party with someone I know socially, a daughter of a, a friend of ours, who said she had found the Climate CoLab useful for her in her job. She had looked on the Climate CoLab site and gotten some interesting ideas of things she included in a proposal for a consulting client she was working with. So that's an example of how the ideas are having an impact far beyond the actual contest process itself and stimulating lots of other people and ideas in places we probably never even hear about potentially all over the world.